I've been using this new iPad Pro as my desktop computer for the last entire week to see if these things can replace having a laptop. And for context, I'm not only a guy who makes YouTube videos, I also have a salaried job where I am the technical director of an event production company. I work from my home office, primarily using Outlook for email, OneDrive for shared files with 10 other people, Teams for meetings, AutoCAD for floor plans, and then whatever three dozen other things that pop up as a result of being part of a remote team. For my other job, this job, making tech reviews, I write on pages, I use notes for notes, Final Cut Pro for editing, and then I use Photoshop for thumbnails or cutting stuff out of the backgrounds. My whole life is basically on a computer in one capacity or another. Are we ready to transition to this thing for all of it? My setup for this last week has been like full on desktop. iPad Pro plugged into an Apple Studio display. I have this mechanical keyboard, a mouse, a USB-C hub so I can use SD cards and just plug a bunch of other stuff in, and this Thunderbolt external drive. And this iPad has had no problems and all of this stuff just works without any setup. Even the volume knob on my sweet ass keyboard works. So that's great. And having a Thunderbolt port is extra nice because like copying a movie over to the iPad for a flight or whatever used to take several minutes on the base iPad because that thing had like USB 2 speeds. But now anything that's less than like 10 gigabytes will copy over basically instantly, which is really handy for stuff like drone footage. The DJI Air 3 has this really fast port on its butt. Now that I'm trying to edit on the iPad, I have to move lots of gigs of footage over to the iPad to do so. The last time I tried to use one of these as a desktop computer, the windowing system didn't work nearly as well. iPad OS 26 is way better. It feels a lot more like Mac OS, although not like Mac OS. But I can open up as much stuff as I want, I can clutter up my screen as much as I want, and everything seems to stay where I put it. The older version of Stage Manager lets you have separate windows open, but it was like when you moved them around, as soon as you let go of them, they would drift back to this predetermined spot. Didn't like that. But this still does a few things that I'm bothered by. The idea of using an external monitor is that you're extending the screen. And I'm using the Apple Studio display, so this really should be as compatible of a screen as it could be. But in practice, it seems to work more like I have two separate environments that are both controlled by the iPad. For some reason, you can't take a window and just drag it from one screen to the other. Even though your cursor can move between these, it's not like one big long desktop. So if I'm watching a YouTube video over here, but I wanna put it aside so I can use this screen to answer some emails, but keep the video going, it won't drag off this screen and onto this screen. It'll just disappear. Instead, what you do is you go to the other screen and you click the YouTube app over there and it sort of closes over here and reopens over here. It doesn't lose track of where it was or anything and the audio even just keeps playing. So it's no big deal, it's just strange. And so when I was arranging my windows for a work day, I just kept running into this because I'm just so used to throwing windows onto the other display. Whatever, not a big deal. Then getting to my home network is also a bunch of steps for no reason. In the files app, there's no section for network like there is on Mac OS. You have to use this connect to server thing and you have to actually know the IP address of where you're going. So like I had to go look up the IP address on my NAS to connect to it. I find this to be cumbersome. I don't use ChatGPT for a whole lot, but I do use it for help with things like, I'm trying to install this PoE security camera on my NAS, but the setup screen is half in Chinese and makes no sense. What do I do from here? And then taking a screenshot and just sending it to ChatGPT, and man, it is so good at walking me through that kind of stuff. Like just knowing the back end of basically everything. That's what she said. And on a Mac, it's so easy to just hit Shift Command 4, marquee select a portion of the screen to take a screenshot, and then just drag that straight into ChatGPT, of all in one move. For whatever reason, on iPad, they added a few extra steps that make that a little annoying, but still totally doable. You can take a screenshot with the Shift Command 4 keyboard shortcut, but you can't drag across the screen to make your selection. You have to resize the window that pops up, which is just a few extra clicks. And also, I don't need these screenshots clogging up my Photos app, so I just pick the copy and delete choice. So it's just a matter of getting used to the dozen little things like that and undoing my Mac OS muscle memory. And while all the Microsoft Office apps basically work flawlessly, and I don't think I think I'd be held back in any way by using this as my main computer. One thing I do in meetings is I have this camera connected to my computer at all times. So anytime someone calls me, they get this impossibly clear, practically Netflix documentary quality stream of me talking back to them. People comment on that almost every day. And unfortunately, the iPad version of Teams won't recognize my Sony a7 IV. I don't know why. The internet assures me that there are workarounds and I can get this going. So I guess my only real gripe is that it just works out of the box on Mac OS and I'm gonna have to do stuff to make it work on here. Probably a one-time setup, 
not a deal breaker. But I feel like all of this has been nitpicking. Let's get back on track. When doing a normal work day, this has been great. This is totally doable. I actually don't have that many complaints at all. Microsoft Teams works exactly like on desktop. Sending and receiving emails is no different. For this stuff, plus Safari or Chrome, messages, all of your regular life-stealing corporate drone nine to five white collar stuff is seamless. Easy transition. There are some instances where I actually like using this thing a bit better than my normal MacBook Pro plus monitor setup. I've got my Duncan app just right here on the screen. Don't have to pick up my phone. I actually like the layout of the YouTube Studio app on iPad more than I do on the desktop. Same with the United Airlines app. It doesn't make me sign in every time I go to it like the website does. Oh, and having Face ID to sign into like my banking app or to pay for stuff on Amazon or Home Depot is just when I'm ordering stuff, I literally just have to turn my face over to the iPad. And Bob's your uncle. The thing's paid for. Whoa. A whole day has gone by since that last cut. Where was I? Right. When someone sends me an email and it's got a floor plan on it because they're asking me whether or not they can hang a chandelier in this booth. There's a 30 foot high ceiling. It's a temporary tent on South Beach. On iPad, it is so much easier just to zoom into the right part of this picture, take a little screenshot and then make little notes with the pen explaining why this is okay versus doing that whole thing with the mouse on Mac OS. It's the same story if something needs a signature. Can you believe a signature is meaningful in any capacity in 2025? You can literally copy and paste them off a document. But whatever, people ask me to sign stuff sometimes and with Apple Pencil, it is just so easy to download a PDF, sign my thing, hit okay and send it back. This screen is so ridiculously responsive to the Apple Pencil. What you're seeing right now is not helpful for this example because I'm shooting this video in a cinematic 24 frames per second and this screen refreshes like five times faster than that, but it is so nice to scribble on. It is so immediately responsive. Anyway, having a pen turned out to be great. One of those things I didn't even realize I wanted, but then I ended up using it every single day. But I have a pretty specific job where I have to explain whether or not things will work, often by scribbling on AutoCAD floor plans, so I understand if this isn't something people might regularly use. The Files app works mostly like Finder, although on my Mac, I am someone who just lets my desktop get loaded up with things, and then I use command spacebar search to find pretty much everything, or just open a window and sort by date. But since this doesn't have desktop, I'm forced to be a little more organized with where I put things. But that's just another personal quirk I'd have to unlearn if I'm gonna switch from my MacBook to an iPad full time. The point is, I'm not really held back by this. If someone emails me a document, I can save it easily. I can get to it pretty easily. I can drag and drop it into other places fairly easily until I get to Photoshop. Photoshop is buggy as hell. I suppose this isn't Apple's fault, but man, you'd think after whatever seven versions of an OS, they'd have it figured out. When connected to an external display, Photoshop just goes bonkers some of the time. What you're seeing here, I was just moving the mouse around. I wasn't doing anything. And then regular Photoshoppy things like, I don't know, drag this picture of Joey onto this working document. Doesn't work, can't do it. But then some things work super well compared to the desktop version. Like it is so very easy to trace around stuff using Apple Pencil compared to a mouse, which used to be a big part of my own Photoshopping. But now all these tools where you just whammo and remove the background out of any picture, they work so well that I don't really find myself tracing things that much anymore. But what I mean to say is I can make my thumbnails on the iPad. Mine aren't very complex anyway, but I do prefer the desktop version of Photoshop. You can grab pictures from web pages and just drag them into a folder to save them. AutoCAD is another total redesign and I had a bit of a tough time just picking it up because I have so many years of muscle memory on the desktop version. I will say with this device, it's incredible to be able to just walk around on site with a living floor plan in my hand that I can zoom into and get measurements of anything. The interface is so super smooth and responsive and it's just good at being a live floor plan in my hands. Using paper maps now almost feels antique. Interestingly, the UI in the iPad version is much smoother than on the desktop. Again, another thing you can't see on this YouTube video because you can't see the refresh rate, but this is super smooth, the 120 hertz screen. But editing stuff, like actually creating one of these kind of dense floor plans on the iPad is cumbersome. For whatever reason, there are so many apps on iPad that don't let you use Command C, Command V to copy and paste stuff. That's so odd. But again, this was completely doable. I actually literally did work on this all week, even on AutoCAD. I didn't make any plans from scratch during this last week. I just didn't happen to have to, but I did do plenty of editing things and took lots of measurements and generally wasn't held back. I just find it annoying that if I wanna make another piece of truss, I have to touch that, touch copy on here, drag to a starting point, tap that to confirm, drag down to the copy point, tap that to confirm, and then I got my new thing. I'll bet there's faster ways to do stuff.
I just don't know how to do it yet on the iPad version because for some reason they rewrote the program and won't let my keyboard shortcuts do the normal things. And I would say AutoCAD is the most demanding thing that I normally do on a computer other than video editing, which takes us to Final Cut Pro. Why, Tim Cook? Someone show this to Tim Cook. Why is Final Cut Pro iPad this way? Did anybody realize I switched glasses? <laughs> I'm gonna keep these ones on. I hadn't looked at the monitor until right now. I have to assume that the only people who will use Final Cut Pro on the iPad are people that already use Final Cut Pro. I have no data to support that and that's probably not right. But as someone who uses Final Cut Pro for many hours every week, why, oh why, did you make it so hard to edit on this? This has an M5 processor. There is no need to nerf this program even a little bit. Like sure, if you're just using this as a handheld tablet with a pen, you want this touch interface, but you sell this as a combo with this keyboard and track Pad. You have to expect that people are gonna use it like a laptop and it would not use up too much extra SSD space to have both the desktop and iPad interface built in. I'd say the same for Autodesk. Like, what are you doing? I can only copy and paste things by touching copy and then going through a series of prompts. Surely I just haven't messed with it enough. I should be treating these as completely new and independent softwares. And I guess if you only ever learned video editing on an iPad, you'd probably think the desktop version is confusing and weird. I don't know. And none of that was my point. I actually came on here to say that you can do this. You can use an iPad as a desktop computer, especially if you have a big screen to go with it. I did make this little one minute long video about cutting between two camera angles to test the multicam functionality. And actually, after I got into the groove of it, it really wasn't that hard at all to chop this thing up. Creating the multicam worked perfectly and easily. Cutting out empty space was easy enough. It's just a completely different set of button combinations than the desktop version for some reason, and a few extra clicks here and there. It was like learning a new editing software, which I feel like since I'm going from Final Cut Pro to Final Cut Pro, I shouldn't have to do, but now I'm acting like a boomer. Get off my lawn. And I will maintain that the Magic Mouse, for all of its flaws, is simply the best editing mouse you can get. I know that's a little unrelated to what I was talking about, but sideways scrolling through a timeline with just a finger swipe is just so valuable while video editing. Get a Magic Mouse. iPad sees this mouse and pairs with it just fine. I was slower than normal, and then I did have to convert it and move it over to my Mac so I could add animated titles and do magnetic masking. So I would not be able to make my normal videos with just the iPad Pro. They left some stuff out that I use on every video. And not only did they leave the magnetic mask out of the iPad version of Final Cut Pro for some reason, but on the iPad page of Apple's own website, they brag about DaVinci Resolve's magic mask, which is the same thing. It's nuts. The other thing is that I can't use third-party plugins. I use some motion VFX plugins for my animated titles. So I can't use third-party plugins. I can't use several of the normal keyboard shortcuts. B for blade tool. No pulled option and drag to make a copy of a clip. No way, man, can't do that. I did find a way to put custom fonts in there. Actually, ChatGPT told me. If you download this program called AnyFont and you pay a couple bucks, then you can connect it to dafont.com and actually download fonts right into the system of the iPad Pro. So they work everywhere. I was using those in Photoshop too. It's strange there's no Apple font book on the iPad. Very briefly, I'm gonna talk about gaming because I don't think many people are doing it that much in a desktop iPad environment. Like sure, people are playing games while they're not paying attention to a TV show on the couch, but I mean like actual AAA games that you would have on PlayStation or your PC or whatever, of which there are maybe three in total that I even know about. I downloaded Assassin's Assassin's Creed Mirage, and actually it's pretty impressive. And you can turn the graphics up all the way and they look really nice. Like it looks, it at least looks no different than PlayStation, although it's limited to 30 frames per second. I have to assume making an iPad version was more work than it was worth to get it ported over since they didn't do it for Assassin's Creed Shadows, even though they did make that available on Mac. And since there are essentially no other big games available for iPad, even though they run pretty good, it's clearly capable of running a solid version at pretty high resolution, even if it's on low graphic settings of a game that was made in 2023. Minecraft is smooth as hell on here. Oh, I'm in a dungeon, I'm gonna get it killed real fast. I think you can use an iPad Pro as your main computer, as your only computer. And especially if you're a student or like a nine to five office worker. This thing flies through Microsoft Office apps. Even with a YouTube video or a movie playing on a second screen, it doesn't mind. You could definitely start or run a YouTube channel on one of these. You just can't use the freaking magnetic mask, which is a new tool anyway. No one had it for the last 15 years. And on all of the like bundled effects and titles websites, it does say iPad version coming soon. So they are working on that. It's all getting fleshed out right now. Having a camera on the back is occasionally handy. And of course, the fact that it is your tablet. You don't also need a tablet. If you don't fly a lot, maybe you don't know, but they don't make you put away an iPad on the plane while you're taking off, but they do make you put your MacBook away. And fun fact, the 13 inch iPad compared to a MacBook Air, I mean, if anything, it's chunkier. It's 
literally kind of the same exact thing. These are arguably the same handheld device. Gotta put this away when you take off. Don't gotta put this away when you take off. And since I'm holding this thing, almost everything that I've said today is true for the iPad Air. This is the 13 inch iPad Air, bigger screen. This thing's missing the LiDAR sensor on the camera so you can't scan things in 3D, which is not very common to do. But as far as processor speed, the M5 versus the M3, yes, the M5 is way faster than the M3, but that is not something you notice on an iPad. You can use Final Cut Pro on this exactly the same way. In fact, I don't know of any program. I guess maybe games might have a, some lower settings. And I suppose export would be slower, but there would be few times that you notice the difference in speed between an Air and a Pro. I probably have more things I could say about this, but I don't think I'm gonna say anything else because it's actually Halloween right now, and I'm gonna go outside and give away king-size candy bars to a bunch of little kids. Thank you for coming to my talk. Sometimes when you have your button pushed on the smoke machine, you don't realize that you're putting way too much haze into the air. <laughs>